how's it going? I'm Zero. I'm DK. And I'm Rizzo. And today on Anime Reaction, we watch the fourth episode of Drifters. If you want to check out our reaction to the fourth episode of Drifters, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comment section because we love hearing from you. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga and don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. So on this episode of Drifters... Uh, kind of starting to ease things along. Yeah, it, it, it started to... Um, it started to started to move the the story along i guess uh started to to show the drifters kind of getting ready to fight back yeah but i felt that it was really a um, that it was really a i guess almost breather yeah episode. almost a breather episode after what the last one was cuz yeah. like there was a lot of the last one last had week, yeah. almost no humor except for the very end this one was almost entirely humor <laughs> Except for when it was showing the Black King. But yeah, it was pretty much kind of like cool down from uh, all the fighting that went on, not only with that uh, Northern Keep, yep. Elm's Deep and all, with and, the Black yeah, King. And really, his... uh, really setting the stage mm. for what's going to happen next. Uh, in this one, we, we find out that uh, how the uh, oh, uh, Octoberist. Octoberists, how, how exactly they are able to um, translate for the drifters is a talisman. A simple charm talisman. Well, also, uh, and I think this might be important later on, Nobunaga uh, remarks that it's similar to what, um, uh, I think what they call them. Uh, uh, Omioji. Like, Omioji, that's it, thank you. Uh, that's what Omioji used back in Kyoto. So, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think that it's revealed who the leader of the Octoberist is, but we do have a character list, so I know who it is. Yeah. <laughs> so it makes sense why why uh, why uh, Nobunaga would know that, or would would see that it's similar to the Omiyoji. Mm. Let's just put it there and, and leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, m most of this episode was was about the three from the castle, uh, Nobunaga, Yoichi, and Toyohisa, figuring out what's going on, basically, by um, questioning. <laughs> questioning. Four eyes boobs. Four eyes boobs. Worst spy ever. Best pet name ever. Yeah, let's Four see. You get. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally gonna put that down on yep. your profile too. <laughs> so you totally get caught, and then you sing like you sing like a bird. <laughs> Without any prodding, I may add. Oh, she, yeah, she just gets tied up and just spills the beans. Yep. Actually, before she got tied up, she just started spilling the beans. Yeah. So great. Right, yeah. Way to handle interrogation. Well, I mean. <laughs> To be fair, it's not like it's not like she was you know, attempting at secrecy there. Fair she enough, was just observing. Yeah, she was being an observer just to just to figure out if they were drifters or ends or what their overall goals are and stuff like that. Fair enough. It's not like she was uh, yeah. hiding for the sake of you know, being secretive. True, true, and she's also you know by uh by trade a mage not a like a spy or assassin or yeah. anything all right well, we'll, we'll give her that break so she certainly receives none for nobunaga <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so the elves it shows the elves talking in their city hall i guess about uh you know about what they could possibly do to survive the situation that they found themselves in. Because <laughs> because of Nobunaga, half the half of the uh, the wheat, crops yeah, are half ruined. The, half the wheat field got burned. So the, even if the Lord forgives them for killing his troops, which is very unlikely, they they're going to starve. The, yeah, they can't pay the. They wouldn't even have enough to pay the tax. Let yeah, alone, he'll take the rest of their crop. Yeah, let alone what to eat. But. Um, this is almost so, exactly yeah. the Seven Samurai. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like, 
like to a T the seven samurai. So then the three from the castle show up with four eyes boobs. Intel. <laughs> four eyes boobs. And I'm gonna call her out forever now. Yep. She is no she is not old man old mean. Yeah. Old mean a. She's not old mean a anymore. She's four eyed boobs. She's simply four eyes boobs. Four. Um Anyway, so they show up, and initially Yoichi tries to communicate with them in their own oh language, my God. which was hilarious. Tell me, tell me. Tell you, tell you. <laughs> oh my God. Because basically Yoichi tried to learn the language by himself, and honestly, he did a reasonable job, you know, being mm-hmm. self-taught, but... He can only do so much. He can only do so much, <laughs> and then for as booze, you know... They're like, so how do you guys communicate? Oh, or, oh, we have a talisman. Something that simple. Give me that shit. <laughs> well, you could have oh. done that before Yoichi went and made an ass of himself. <laughs> Apologize to Yoichi. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that shit and beg for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I like when she posts it, or uh, when when it gets posted up right on Yoichi's face, and he acts like a Jiangxi. <laughs> <laughs> they hop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. So, in, in a strange turn of events, uh, Nobunaga insists that Toyohise takes the lead on any commanding in this in this aspect. He raises Toyohise to be the figurehead. That way the assassins get him first. And the reasoning he gave for it? Because Toyohise took the middle seat when they posed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's actually kind of a big uh, deal. Um, even uh, today in Japanese culture, you usually don't take the head of a table or a center seat that's reserved as the leader seat. You usually don't take it unless it's offered to you, and even so, you're supposed to be like a little uh, hesitant, out of humility. Mm. So, oddly yeah. enough, Nobunaga didn't object to it. Well, it, so he, he, he basically was it. like. Oh, well, you know, I was going to sit there, but okay. Whatever, we'll roll with it. Yeah. (laughs) I'm dead back in the real world anyway. But I do love love that that was a a tap on the fourth wall. Right. (laughs) It wasn't necessarily breaking, but it was certainly a tap. I'll give it there, yeah. Leaning on it. (laughs) Um, And then we we do get a little bit about, kind of between Toyohisa and Nobunaga, about, you know, one of them thinking... Basically, Nobunaga thinking, oh, you know, he's he's like my son. And Toyohisa thinking, oh, he's, he's like, like my father. father. But, of course, they won't say it out loud. Because they're, so, they're such Sundura. <laughs> right. So soon, soon. <laughs> <laughs> and that, oh, man. And like I said in the reaction, if the little squabble that ensued after they flung those insults at each other got any more cartoony, you'd see a dust cloud with sound effects. <laughs> I know. In the form and of I like I like uh, Yoichi. Uh, I want to join in too. Hey! <laughs> Boot to the head. And then, like two uh, frames later, you see Yoichi in a headlock from Nobunaga. It was awesome. Uh, or no, it was uh, crazy. Like when when uh, when they when the elves shouted at him to to stop or <laughs> yeah. whatever, and they're like fighting against each other, and Yoichi is biting Nobunaga's head. <laughs> Which is a hilarious thing in cartoony fights in anime. Again, though, I, not, not I, the best example of it, though. Yeah, but, but again, though, I mean, it's just a lot, a lot of humor in this episode. Yeah. But at the same time, it still had a lot of serious points, especially when they're talking about. Um, and Nobunaga brought up very good points with uh, the oncoming, oncoming army. Mm. Uh, what was the country's name? Orte. Orte. Um, the human country to the east. Yeah. But Orte is definitely going to show up. You know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Yeah. And um, one of the one of the elves was like, "So what if they actually come? Oh, what if? There's no what if. They are coming. They're <laughs> yeah. mobilizing right now. You killed their troops. They won't report back." Because of that, they're gonna be they're gonna be here in a matter of days. Yeah, well, four the days day after tomorrow. Four probably. days. No, no. given how well equipped they were, you'd probably say three days. Shimazu could have done it in one. That's because your clients are a bunch of freaks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. But yeah, basically they they have serious moments kind of interspersed in this episode, but um pretty well done considering the graveness of the situation all the characters find ourselves in and the quality of humor we get when we get it yeah so but it doesn't lean that too much to either direction it, it works and then at the end of the episode we see the detachment of 200 troops showing up to the elf village and nobody's home again straight out of the seven samurai let them in they're trapped and yeah Total we, slaughter. Yeah, we yeah. see Toyohisa, and he simply says, I'm going to I take, take all, their all their heads, heads tonight. <laughs> <laughs> going uh, to kill them all. I'm going to take all their heads tonight. We also get a little bit uh, with uh, Nashikano, the Zero Pilots. Uh, he finally makes his crash landing, and he's surrounded by either wolves or werewolves. And probably, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Rizzo, armed with only a sidearm. Maybe a sword, but actually probably no. a sword as well. Yeah, so probably a, a Nambu pistol and a sword. Yeah, and uh, probably that and, was probably the the norms for back then. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. basically what what normally you'd have. Uh, my my thing with this is, you know, usually a character is not not introduced arbitrarily and they have a purpose. Right. Um, this one currently is so far off the beaten path. It's hard to conceive him getting back on it and joining up with the rest of the group. Hmm, okay. Or joining up with a group. Because right now we have two, three groups. We have the ends, mm-hmm. we have Toyohisa and his group, and then we have uh, Butch Cassidy. Uh, Butch Cassidy, Caesar, kid, Attila, Caesar and, and Attila. Yeah. Or no, Hannibal, Hannibal. Hannibal. Other. Um, the only thing that I can think is if. Uh, if the group with Caesar and Hannibal were following where he was flying, mm. like that's the only th- that's the only thing that I could think to get him out of that situation. Or they might run into him because they're making a hot escape. So something like that. Mm. I'd be that, that that's an interesting storyline to go down. Um, I don't know if we'll actually have a lot of time for that in terms of you know it's only a, it's only a twelve. 12 episode series, right? Yeah. 12, 13 episodes. But it's a, it's a long time for a, a slight deviation like that. So we'll see. So, um, yeah, so if he does a recovery, it has to be within like the next couple episodes. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And then another little side note, we got to see the Black King's ability. The um, Black King is the White Mage. I have a feeling that he has a lot of abilities. Probably. I do too. Yeah, yeah, you can't uh, command a force like that without just, you know, just being a healer. But, um, I mean, he, uh, one, one of the, uh, orcs, I guess, mm. one of the pig looking guys, he had a gash like this wide, like that deep, going, you know, going all up and down his shoulder, and the, the Black King just went boom. Paced. It instantly cauterized. Well, not that it, it was. It was instantly right. like healed. Yeah, just scar tissue. Just yep. yeah. healed. I mean, and basically, to, it accelerated the healing by like probably a year. I actually kind of like that too. That it left a, a scar there, a little more uh, believable than the standard. Oh, it's perfectly normal again. So interesting touch. It, it is a really interesting touch. If, and, I, if I created a series with magic, that's probably the way I would do healing <clears throat> magic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It just accelerates healing. It doesn't remove the damage. And also, orc chicks do scars. <laughs> Why'd you have to put that image in my head? <laughs> because. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> and now you guys are traumatized too. I but love a photographer for that. <laughs> now, sorry, go ahead. There's, there's already far too much orc porn. <laughs> uh, fair uh, enough. Fair anyway, enough. um. So we, we got a little bit of insight to what the Black King's doing. Uh, he's just taking over the world. No, he pretty much gave us his manifesto in a nice monologue. Yeah. Well, yeah. So basically, I guess from his point of view, or maybe it actually happened. Who knows? Mm. They they did say that ends are basically insane, but from his point of view, he tried to help the humans, and they spurned him. So naturally, his only course of action was to help the demi humans. And kill all the humans. At, at least he's logical about it. I mean, to the point where he's thinking about recruiting the elves that were just 
you know, beaten into submission. Mm. I mean, basically, he would help out any demi humans, mm -hmm. I think. So, you know, any uh, the elves, the dwarves, the hobbits, the orcs, the whatevers. All the fantastical races in this world. Next week's episode. What the fuck was <laughs> up with those taglines, yo? What was it? Bo uh, Boobiana. Boobianu. Yeah, Boobianu. Organization. Boobianu organization. I want in on that. Um, yeah. Piece of... Uh, I didn't know it. Damn it. No, I can't even remember what it was. Play it through. Okay. This is, yeah, this is just too bizarre. Power of shit. Power of shit. <laughs> Monkey Mono yell. L. And bring back love. That's the episode title. The episode title is bring back love. What is what? power of shit? What? This sounds like a very interesting porno that I would never watch. Okay, I'm about this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least you wouldn't admit to it openly. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if you want to go ahead and check out our previous reactions to Drifters, go ahead and click on my head. Yep, and click on my head to see the podcast where we talk about all of our anime that we're watching this season. If you want to take a break from contemplating the power of shit, click on my face to check out OS Gaming, featuring Rizzo's playthrough of Tales of Hysteria and more content coming soon. And click on the waifu if you'd like to subscribe to Otaku Saga and check out our new and improved Patreon page. <laughs> <laughs> but that wraps up for this time in Anime Reaction. I'm Zero. I'm DK. And I'm Rizzo. See, See you next time. time.